TV KPM Miss Sim <coughs> Yes, Miss yes, Sim. who is calling me? It's me, Sean Sean, where are you, Sean? I'm over here, oh, oh Sean, are you okay? I, I don't know why, but I can't see you It's just yeah, so hazy Yeah, I can't hazy. see you as well, right Why is it so hazy? I don't know, is our air being polluted again? Um, There must be some way to reduce or eliminate this pollution Yeah, <coughs> let's figure uh, it out Alright, but first I have to find you yeah, Miss sure, Sim, are you there? Sure. Here, I'm here, here? Where? Here, here, over here! Hello everyone, you are now watching Upper Form on Didate TV KPM together with me, Sean Seaman, as your host. And for today, our lesson is in English together with Miss Sim. Hi Miss Sim. Hi Sean. How are you doing today? Good. Yeah, aside from the hazy weather, obviously. Right. But first, we'll also like to introduce our sign language interpreter, and that is none other than Miss Cathy. Hi Miss Cathy. How are you doing today? Excellent. Now back to Miss Sim. Miss Sim, I believe yeah. that we also have a, well, a few students that are joining us online as well, right? right? Yeah. Let's see who they are. Hi, everyone. Hi, there guys. There we go. Could you kindly introduce them to all of us? Yeah, sure. Okay, um, let's start from Yilin. Yilin, can you wave to them? Hi. Hi. All right. Then we have Gan Tianlong. Tianlong? Yeah. Right, and we have Jiaxuan. Jiaxuan, yes. And we have Jen Hong. Jen Hong, say hi. hi. Yeah. I have a very important question for you. Are you ready for a lesson for today? Give me a thumbs up if you are. Double thumbs up. There we go. It looks like they are all ready. Yeah, but right, I have sure. to also ask you, Miss Sim, what mm -hmm. exactly are we learning today? All right, so today we actually are going to compare two different pictures mm -hmm. and we are going to express our opinions on the common issue, okay. which is today we are going to talk about air pollution. Ah, all right. So, shall we begin? Yeah, sure. All right, let's go. All right, okay. So, like I said, oh, the screen is not on. The screen is not on, I cannot see. Oh, right. Okay. So, can continue or what? Eda, nak terus continue boleh ke? Wah, cikgu terus continue. Uh, okay. All right. Okay. So today we're going to talk about air pollution, right? And it is actually in our English language form four, and we are going to target a uh, speaking skill today. Mm. All right. Okay. So let's see. <clears throat> so if you have your textbook with you, right, you can refer to form four textbook, which is full blast plus four, and we are going to focus on unit seven, which is mother nature, and you can turn to page one hundred and seven if you would like to know what are we going to have later on. Okay. So. So for our learning objective today, what we are going to learn, first we are going to use appropriate formal register to describe two different pictures. So later I'm going to show you two different pictures. You are going to learn how to use some of the formal register to describe them. And I will tell you more about formal register later. Right. And for the second uh, objective that we are going to learn we are going to learn how to give personal opinions on the common issue and today we are going to use air pollution as our issue by providing strong supporting details which means when you give your opinions you have to explain why you have such opinions right mm -hmm. so let's move on so for our content today first we are going to talk about urban and rural okay then we are going to talk about two different pictures we mm -hmm. are going to compare them and the third one we are going to talk about cause and effect and the last one we will talk about what can we do to solve a, a common issue okay all right so so this is our warm-up activity. Like I say just now, the first part, mm -hmm. we are going to talk about urban and rural areas. So okay. what is urban and what is rural? Like some of my pupils, they don't understand uh, the meanings of these words. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So for urbans, 
which means, okay, like big cities or towns where uh, those places are quite developed. Ah, Whereas okay. uh, if we are talking about rural area, mm -hmm. which means it's under underdeveloped areas such as villages mm -hmm. or the countryside. Mm -hmm. So it is a huge difference between them. Okay. So, um, today we're going to talk a little bit, because this is just a warm up, mm -hmm. to talk about the advantages and disadvantages of living in an urban area compared to living in a rural area. All right. So for those who are uh, sitting in front of the televisions, if you are watching our um, program today, so maybe you can think about this uh, in your mind, like what are the advantages or the disadvantages of living in an urban area compared to a rural area. Mm -hmm. And we also ask our pupils here in yep. the meet to uh, express their opinions on this topic. Okay. Yeah. So maybe you can invite them right now. So any one of you would like to try on this first? Yes, who would like to try? Jashen? Yeah, I can see that Jashen is raising up her hands. <clears throat> okay, Jason, so what is your opinion on this? In my opinion, mm -hmm. one of the advantages of living in an urban area mm -hmm. is that the transportation system <coughs> is highly developed and mm -hmm. it often receives regular funding and updates. It allows us to get from place to place faster and easier. Besides, we can save our money and time by using public transportation in this urban area. All right, ah, okay, she okay. talks about the transportation yes. in the urban area, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, how about another pupils would like to try on this? Elin? Okay, let's see what Elin would like to say. From my point of view, one of the advantages of living in an urban area is that there are more opportunities awaiting you in a city compared to a countryside or village. Mm -hmm. What's more is that you will find a wide variety of opportunity as well beside career. For example, easy access to education institutions and service center. Okay, so mm -hmm. she talks about job opportunities that we can find urban. So both of them mentioned about uh, the advantages of uh, living in an urban area. Yes. How about the disadvantages, right? Mm -hmm. So we'd we'll like to hear those opinions from the boys as well, ah, right? So yeah. maybe the boys can try on the disadvantages of living in an urban area. Anyone would like to try first? Kenlong, okay, Kenlong. Well, from my perspective, living in urban areas also has its downsides. For instance, busy towns or cities can be crowded at times. Mm -hmm. Traffic jams will be a pain in the neck after working hours. Oh, yes. Mm. Besides, you may also not be able to form such tight knit communities if compared to the people who live in rural areas. All right, so he mentions about the crowded areas or traffic jams, right? Yes, correct. Okay, how about Jian Hong? What is your opinion? Okay, so in my opinion, mm -hmm. living in an urban sprawl can be a very hectic lifestyle with time equals money as the golden rule. Compared to a rural lifestyle where you can go at your own pace, urban life is a lot more stressful and chaotic, leading to the damage of not just one's physical health, but also their mental health. Hmm, so he mentioned about the hectic lifestyle there. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. I totally agree with him. So what do you think about all the answers from our students? How yeah, I think you... they have answered it uh, great, like, mm -hmm. because greatly, because uh, they mentioned about the disadvantages and also advantages, mm -hmm. and they also give some examples, like, mm -hmm. uh, what are those and what is their opinions on this. Yeah. All right, yeah. well done, yeah, everyone. Done right job. now, I think everyone deserves a short break. Let's yeah. take a short break. Back to you after this <coughs> on Upper Form on Divit TV KPM. KPM. Hello everyone, you are now watching Upper Form on Didit TV KPM together with me, Sean Steven and also Miss Sim for our subject English Form 4. So get your textbooks ready, full blast plus four. All right, so Miss Sim, shall we continue? Yeah, sure. All right. Okay, so now move on to our second activity. 
So we are going to learn how to compare and contrast two different pictures. Mm -hmm. So as you can see here, this is also one of the tasks in your textbook, which is on page 107. Okay, so if you look at this task, it says um, they ask, they would like you to compare the two pictures below, which is I already labeled it as picture A, mm -hmm. okay, and also picture B. Okay, so before we continue with the task, maybe I can ask my pupils here, what can you see in picture A and picture B before we compare uh, them? Yeah? Okay. So maybe we would like to ask uh, any one of you who would like to talk about picture A, what did, what did you see in picture A just now? Okay, anyone would like to try this? Picture A? Elin, okay, Elin. What can you see from this picture? I can see a woman mm -hmm. is wearing a mask and she seems unhappy. All right, okay, a woman mm -hmm. is wearing a face mask and she seems unhappy, right? Okay, yeah. how about another pupil would like to try? Long. okay, what else? Um, there are many vehicles and people at the background mm -hmm. with some buildings around. Okay, so in the background we can see that there are some vehicles, buildings, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. okay, how about picture B? Guys, anyone? Jen Hong. Okay, Jen Hong, what can you see in picture B? Um, from what I can gather, I can see blue skies, mm -hmm. green fields, and a man that is embracing Mother Nature. Okay, yeah. blue sky, green fields. Okay, how about another pupils, like the last pupils? Jashin, okay. I can see the man is opening his home mm -hmm. and enjoying the nature. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right? As in, this guy is like enjoying himself, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah, sure. So when we uh, talk about this, first we have to identify what are they in the pictures, okay? So um, when we compare these two pictures, okay, uh, in your textbook, you also have some ideas given and also some words and phrases in the box, which I will show you in the next slide. Okay, so these are from the textbook. You can see that the ideas that uh, you can use to compare the two pictures, for example, talk about the places, is it in the urban or rural area? And you can talk about the atmosphere of the place mm -hmm. and how the people feel in that picture, people's lifestyle, and maybe it affects the people's health or things like that. All right, and also, okay, these are the words given by a textbook. You can also use it in your speaking when you are trying to express your opinions. For example, you talk about urban, rural, right? Just yeah. not as planned. And also, you can say whether it is close to nature, uh, is affected or not affected by the development, lack of something maybe, or the smoke, yeah, which is the the haze or the smoke, okay, and whether the people there they can breathe fresh air or not, and you can also mention about the poisonous chemicals maybe, mm -hmm. or whether the people in there is happy or unhappy peaceful lifestyle or not, or hectic, means like very busy in a fast pass, right? Or you can talk about harmful to their health, or like is it dangerous for them, which can cause diseases, or is it good for them because they can grow their own organic food. Mm. Okay, so those are the ideas provided for you to uh, express your opinions, Okay. right? So, um, you, when you want to express the opinions on these two uh, pictures, because we are talking about a common issue or maybe it is a serious issue, so we have to use formal register. So what is formal register first? So formal register is actually kind of like a formal type of language that uh, we would like to show the importance of the seriousness of our topic. So when we use these formal registers, actually it refers to um, the formal tones that we are using, the formal words, or we use the full sentences to show that uh, these things is an important matter or official one, or we want to discuss, like I say, a serious issue, or um, we would like to talk about business, or we are in a debate, a mm -hmm. formal debate. Yep. And mostly we will use formal register in our education as well. So for example, like when the teacher is teaching in class, we will use formal tone yeah. instead of informal one. Mm -hmm. yep. So what you should avoid when you are using formal registers? So first, okay, you should avoid using slang. Okay. The second one is contraction. 
third one abbreviation and number fourth is informal tone these are just a few examples that I uh, showed to you actually there are tons of it okay so let's go and see what is slang first so you know like Malaysia like uh -huh. sometimes we have this slang you know yeah. like la me like my students always say uh yeah right uh, okay a, a lot of these kind of sound and zoom or something like that okay so you need to avoid this kind of slang okay. and then for the contractions for example like didn't isn't shouldn't or sometimes like the informal like in the spoken language like gonna like that mm -hmm. so we should avoid that because we are in a formal matter yes. right we are talking about a serious issue or something like that mm -hmm. so to show uh, we are like quite professional in talking about this okay so abbreviations mean like the short forms you know like mm -hmm. like brb sys ASAP. So maybe I would like to ask my pupils here, do you know what is BRB, SYS, ASAP? Okay, so anyone would like to try on this BRB? What is this? Anyone? Okay, Yilin, let's see whether she get it correct or not. What is BRB, Yilin? Be right back. Yeah, right. Be That's right back. Right. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. How about SYS? Anyone would like to try? It's not SOS, but SYS. Yeah. <laughs> Jashen, okay, Jashen is okay. What is uh, SYS? See you soon. See you soon, ah, yeah, yeah, yes. see you soon, right. Mm -hmm. Okay, and the most common one, ASAP. Some some people will say ASAP, right? Oh. So what is ASAP? Anyone would like to try? The boys? Jen Hong? Okay, Jen Hong, what is ASAP? As soon as possible. Yeah, thank you, right, as soon as possible. So when you try to um, mention about an issue, okay, you cannot just say like, oh, S uh, ASAP or SYS, because some people, they may not know what is that, right? So you need to say it uh, clearly, all right? So of course, like, be right back, all these things uh, is quite informal as well, so mm -hmm. we have to avoid it. Yes. Right. And then informal tones, like for example, people say, oh my God, dear, like, or you can say, bro, like, what is this? Mm -hmm. So we need to avoid this kind of informal tone, yeah? Make sure you need to use a formal tone, okay? okay. So, for examples, all right? So for example, how are you going to use a formal one? Yeah, you know, like what I say just now, it, as long as it's in the full sentences, as long as you avoid those uh, informal tones and things like that, uh, there are ways to help you okay, to get the right tone. For example, you can use those cohesive devices, like how to begin your sentence, you can say first and foremost, when mm -hmm. you want to talk about your first point. Yeah. Right, and then when you want to express your opinions, you can say in my opinions. You can also say that oh, one of the uh, one of the differences between these two places is, and then what is that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you can also uh, say from my point of view or from my perspective to begin your sentence if you would like to express your opinions. Right. Yeah. So um, to continue with your sentence, let's say if you have more than one point, right, one main point, you would like to express more then you can say besides okay uh, moreover or you can say secondly my second point is or you can talk about not only that other than that or you can say another huge difference is and then you continue with your point mm -hmm. or you can if you would like to express an opposite idea okay to contrast with your previous idea you can say that on the other hand all right and then you talk about another one Right? So to end your sentence or to end your point, let's say you have the final point, right? you can say last but not least, lastly, or you can say as you can see, right? living an, in an urban area is, okay? or you can say like my final point is, or you can say to conclude or in conclusions, then you continue with your last point. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So those are the examples that you can use. All right, now let's get back to these tasks. So uh, in your textbook, it says that talk in pairs. So I will group my, stu uh, my pupils here into pairs as well. So I will let two boys into one group and two girls into one group. So they are going to discuss about the differences between these two pictures, picture A and picture B. Shall we start now? All right. Yeah, so maybe we'll let the boys to start first. Okay, mm -hmm. boys, you may start now. Okay, so mm -hmm. I'll start the discussion. Mm -hmm. Kinlong, what do you think the difference between picture A and picture B are? Well, in picture A, the woman looks gloomy. It feels like something's bothering her. 
-hmm. In the meantime, the picture, the man in picture B looks untroubled. He looks like he's enjoying the time of his life. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Of course, from what I can gather, the atmosphere of the two pictures are a stark contrast to each other. I can feel that in picture A, it's suffocating and depressing, while in picture B, it's more vibrant and alive. Do you agree with this? Yes, you're absolutely right. Yeah, okay, so both of them, they're talking about how the people feel there and mm -hmm. the atmosphere in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. And how about the girls? Yeah, maybe we'll move on to the second group. All right, who would like to start first? Okay, Yilin. Hi, Jiaxian. Do you see any differences between these two pictures? Yes, based on my observation on picture A, the, I found that many people are crowded on the road and they look stressed and they're rushing with time. However, for picture B, the man is relaxing and enjoy the refreshing air in such a rural area. What do you think, Yiling? From picture above, I realized that the air in picture A seems polluted and it may cause some harmful disease to the resident. In picture, on the other hand, in picture B, the air is seem like not affected by the development, which means who live there can breathe fresh air every day. Mm. Do you agree with me, Jiaxuan? Yes, I see eye to eye with you. All right, okay, so they talked about um, air pollution, right? They mm -hmm. say like in picture A, uh, the air is being polluted and in picture B, it seems like the air is fresh, mm -hmm. okay? So yeah, great. I think they have done a great job in uh, comparing these two pictures and also uh, telling us about all the ideas that mentions maybe uh, uh, how they feel, the atmosphere, right? Yes. Yeah. All right, I think so too. And right now, we're going to take a short break. Back to you after this on Upper Form on the TV KPM. KPM. Hello there. You're now watching Our Perform on Didate TV KPM together with me, Sean Steven, and also Miss Sim, as well as Miss Cathy as the sign language interpreter. And our lesson, of course, is English Form 4, where we are talking about air pollution, right? Yeah, right. All right, so shall we continue? Yeah, sure. Okay, so just now we have a guided practice. Now let's look at this, okay? This will be an individual task where you will learn how to express your opinions by yourself, okay? We are going to talk about the causes and effects of air pollution. Mm -hmm. So remember those formal registers so I mentioned just now and also some of the words that you may use, okay? So I would like my pupils here in the meet to uh, talk about the causes and effects of air pollution as well. So let's listen to that. Yeah, so we would like to start first on this. Anyone? Okay, Jian Hong, yes. It's your turn now. So, first and foremost, mm -hmm. when looking into the matter of air pollution, mm -hmm. a main culprit is, of course, fossil fuels. Its effects on our atmosphere has been quite alarming, with carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide being two of the big byproducts of the burning of fossil fuels. Mm -hmm. One is dangerous to human health, while the other contributes to worsening greenhouse effect, which eventually will lead to global warming. All right, mm -hmm. so he mentions about like uh, the burning of fossil fuels, mm -hmm. which leads to greenhouse effects and yes. global warming, right? Yes. Okay, how about another pupils? Let's hear from, okay, from Jiaxuan, yes. Well, for me, human activities in our cities mm -hmm. sometimes affect the air quality as well. Mm -hmm. The air pollution has been a major concern around the world, mm -hmm. as it has a serious impact on our health. Mm -hmm. It will lead to a serious cardiovascular disease such as lung cancer. Mm -hmm. All right, 
That's it? Okay. So I think she mentions about the human activists, maybe like open burning, things mm -hmm. like that. Okay. Yeah. So uh, she also mentions about the effect, which is uh, is bad to our health, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it can cause uh, lung cancer, right, if it goes to an extent. All right. So how about we listen to another pupils? Yeah? Anyone here? Okay. Kian Long. Well, in this modern era, the mm -hmm. usage of fossil fuels and in factories increases day, rapidly day by day in urban areas. Mm -hmm. However, due to the lack of responsibility of factory owners, they mm -hmm. tend to dispose their chemical waste, especially poisonous gases, without any precautions. Mm -hmm. This reckless action has caused a huge impact on the quality of air. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Okay. So uh, he mentions about the fossil fuels as well, but this time he mentions about from the factories, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. The effects maybe it affects the quality of the air. Yeah? Yes. Okay. How about another one? Right. We still have one more. Okay, Elin. And in a blink, air pollution brings a variety of pernicious effects to the environment. Mm -hmm. For instance. The, the emissions of gas from an air conditioner to the atmosphere mm -hmm. will damage the ozone layer and cause global warming. This is a serious problem as it is irreversible. All right, I see. Uh, what she means is uh, about uh, people using too many air conditioners mm -hmm. and it affects the uh, ozone layer yes. and also leads to this, uh, uh, the effects for our air pollution, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, now let's move on to see what are those possible causes of air pollution. Like just some you have heard from my pupils, yep. right? They mentions about some of the causes of air pollution. So in your speaking, if you would like to talk about the causes of air pollution, so these may be the points that you can use for your uh, speaking practice, okay? okay? So let's see. All right, so first one, we talk about the human activities, right? Mm -hmm. So we talk about some of the irresponsible uh, citizens, right? They uh, tend to have open burnings, mm -hmm. right? So yeah, it may be one of the cause for our uh, air pollution. Yeah. Uh, is there anyone here, my pupils here, would like to uh, give more example, explain a little bit more about open burning? Anyone? Okay, Kian Long. What do you but think of this point? Open burning has become one of the causes of air pollution. Mm -hmm. This is because people are getting lazier day by day. Mm -hmm. In their opinion, proper waste disposal is very troublesome as it takes a lot of time. Mm -hmm. They tend to find the easiest ways to dispose waste, which is open burning. Okay, I see, right? So um, he mentions that maybe people get lazier and they, they just find the easiest way, right? To yes. get rid of maybe their rubbish or, or anything else. So they just burn it. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. Then we have these second uh, points, yeah, where you can talk about the emission gases, you know, from our vehicles, yeah, from the cars. So uh, this is also one of the uh, common issues, right, for uh, the causes of our air pollution, yeah. yeah? And then uh, we have this high density of human populations. So if we have uh, the high density of human populations, then we tend to use more air conditioners. Yeah. So maybe we have more cars on the road. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this will lead to air pollution as well. Okay. So next is about toxic gases from factories or construction sites. You know, you never know what kind of gases right they, uh, the emissions from the factories. Right. Yes, yeah. that's true. Okay. So, yeah, those are the possible causes. Now we talk about the possible effects of air pollution, right? Okay, so for the possible effects of air pollution, yeah, the first one, okay, we may have a higher risk of respiratory diseases. Mm -hmm. For example, like just now, our pupils here uh, mentioned about lung cancer, right? Yes. It may also affect our heart or lung, so we may have heart failure as well, mm -hmm. yeah? So it is quite risky, especially for our respiratory system, right? Yes. Okay. Then uh, we have this affecting human lifestyle because of the low visibility uh, when we have like the, the air being polluted. So we have hairs, then you cannot see very well, right? Mm -hmm. So the low visibility also affects our daily uh, activities because you couldn't see very well. So you cannot carry out a lot of uh, outdoor activities, That's right? True. And sometimes the air is very harmful to our health as well. Ah, yes. So it will affect our uh, activities daily, mm -hmm. yeah? Okay, then we have this uh, ecological imbalance. But for this one, I would like my pupils here to explain a little bit more. Okay. So, 
any one of you would like to try on this point? Jen Hong? All right, okay, Jen Hong. Okay, so from my knowledge, mm -hmm. um, the ecological imbalance that air pollution brings is from the buildup of smog, which mm -hmm. blocks out sunlight from mm -hmm. plants to undergo photosynthesis. Mm -hmm. This can decrease the quality of air overall and disrupt the ecosystem. Yeah, so mm -hmm. it will be affecting the photosynthesis of the plants, you know, again, sometimes it blocks the sunlight from coming in. So uh, when it affects the plants, you yep. would indirectly affects the animals, then mm -hmm. it will affect the whole ecosystem. That's true. Yeah? Right, yeah. that's true. So he gets it correctly. Okay, then we have the last one, the greenhouse effect that leads to global warming, right? We also mentioned it previously. So this greenhouse effect is actually quite dangerous as well because it traps all the, the heat, mm -hmm. right? Uh, when we have this uh, uh, smog, right? Or yeah. the haze there. And it also brings up to the global warming where uh, the temperature will goes up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it is very dangerous to uh, every human beings or any living things. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Yeah, and with the information that Miss Sim has shared with us, hopefully you can use this as your practice yep. uh, for the speaking, speaking. lesson, yeah, yeah. No, speaking exercises. And right now we're going to take a short break. Back to you after this on Upper Form on Didit TV KPM. KPM. And we are back. You are now watching Upper Form on Didit TV KPM. Our lesson for today is in English Form 4 together with Miss Sim. All right, Miss Sim, shall we continue? Yeah, sure. All okay. Right. So let's move on. Okay, so if you can see here, the way to get started is to quit talking and begin doing. Mm -hmm. So just now we mentioned about the causes and effects of air pollution. So now we have to talk about what are the measures or some solutions that can help us to cope with this air pollution. Okay. Yeah? So let's see. Okay, so I would like to ask my pupils here again, the mm -hmm. same thing. Okay, <laughs> so what can we do? So maybe they can have some instincts, so they can have some insights, they can have their opinions to express okay so we would like to know what do they think like what can we do in order to cope with this air pollution maybe we start with uh, Eileen first okay Eileen okay for my point of view citizens play a crucial role to reduce air pollution third citizens are encouraged to carpool in order to reduce the number of transportations on the roads mm -hmm. not only that it can reduce the Traffic jam too. The carbon monoxide produced by car can also be reduced. It seems like killing two birds with one stone. Okay, so she mentioned about car pulling, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah, good. All right. How about Jiaxuan next? So, from my point of view, mm -hmm. the citizen must be responsible for the air pollution. Mm -hmm. The citizens can plant and grow as many trees as possible. The tree can help in removing carbon dioxide and reduce the greenhouse effect, as well provide us clean air to breathe. The increasing number of trees in an urban area is the essential to improve the air quality. All right, cool. I like this idea yeah, to plant mm -hmm. more trees, you know, especially That's in right. the urban area. Yeah, right. Okay, how about Jian Hong? What do you think? In my humble opinion, mm -hmm. while I do agree with the notion that an individual should be responsible for the quality of air we breathe, mm -hmm. the factory owners need not forget their responsibilities as well in preventing air pollution. Mm -hmm. The emissions and carbon footprint are leaps and bounds ahead of any normal person, yet they face minimal repercussions for this. Governments should enforce the law so those companies and their factories will substitute non-renewables with more sustainable energy, or else they will be fined or have the risk of their factories being shut down. 
All right, I see. Hmm, mm -hmm. it comes like a serious issue, like so for the factories owners, mm -hmm. so the government should enforce the law and they should change their way, like to substitute the non-renewable to mm -hmm. a sustainable energy, like what he say. Yeah. yeah? Okay. How about Qianlong? Well, in my opinion, mm -hmm. factory owners should take more responsibility when it comes to solving this problem. They should focus more on using renewable energy such as solar as it's eco-friendly and there's no limit to using it. Fossil fuels will be gone for good eventually if we keep using them too much. Mm -hmm. Besides, factories should have a proper hazardous waste disposal system to prevent the residents living near the factories becoming the next victim. All right. Okay. Thank you. So Ken Long mentions about uh, we cannot just rely on the fossil fuels, mm -hmm. yeah. And then somewhat it may, uh, if those factories they do not uh, handle their uh, waste properly, so it yeah. may affect the health of the living lifestyle of the residents nearby. Yeah? That's right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sure. So not only the individual, like the authorities, they also have to take uh, take part on this yeah they have to have their responsibilities they have their duties to cope with this issue as well right yes yeah okay so now let's recap right let's go back to our former registers when we talk about a serious issues yeah when we talk about a common issue we need to use former registers in our sentences like what they have mentioned just now as well they use full sentences they use those cohesive devices to guide them mm -hmm. yeah first and foremost however you know okay so Formal register is very important to talk about important or official matters, discussions of a serious issue or any issues maybe, and uh, talk about the business, debate or in education, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, and then to avoid, we have to avoid using slang, right? Contractions, abbreviations and informal tones. For example, okay, I've shown you just now, we have all this, yeah, I'm going to show you again, right, to recap, okay. Then, next, those examples that we can use in our sentences, remember? All right, to begin our sentence, to continue our sentence, or to end our sentence. So you can use first and foremost, okay? My first point is, all right, you can use the second point or secondly. You can also mention besides. But remember, you don't just, uh, you don't need to say besides that. You just use besides is enough. Yeah. All right? Yeah, to end, uh, to end your, uh, maybe your, uh, ideas, yeah. Maybe mm -hmm. you can say for your last point, right? You can conclude it, but instead of saying conclusion, because some of my uh, pupils they will like to say conclusions, yeah. but actually you have to say in conclusion. You don't miss out uh, in, yeah. Yes. Or you can say to conclude, yeah. Mm -hmm. Not just conclude, no. All right, okay. So to end your point there. All right, okay, so now let's go to the summary. So what have we learned today? Mm -hmm. Remember, we learned how to differentiate in between these two pictures, how to describe them, and we also learned how to use formal register to give our idea and opinions, and we also learned how to um, provide Okay, supporting details to support our ideas. Yes. Okay, so uh, we have to use appropriate formal registers to talk about a serious issue. Like mm -hmm. here, we're talking about air pollution, so we must use formal registers, right? Yeah. And for the second point, yeah, we always uh, provide explanations for our opinions or for our to uh, so that other people will trust us or mm -hmm. at least we can persuade them, all right, tends to cite us. Like, okay, when we give our opinions, our uh, explanations, all right, so people will tend to, yeah, I agree with you, right? Mm. Uh, okay, so, and then for the last part, when comparing two different things, right, like just now, two different pictures, we always look for similarities or differences between them, or we can also target on the pros and cons, like just now, the, the first activity, the warm up activity, right? We mm -hmm. talk about the pros and cons of uh, living in an urban area. Yes. Yeah. That's right. Thank you so much for that summary. But uh, we would also like to know mm -hmm. how were the students or um, what were their overall performance like throughout this entire oh, yeah. lesson? I see that um, they all use the formal register. Mm -hmm. They do not use slang or they do not use any abbreviations here. Yep. Yeah, their tone is like quite formal, okay. I can say. It's quite mm -hmm. good. And then the sentences that they use are full sentences and they do not have any hanging sentences there. Yep. So I think all of them have done a great job.
All right, well yeah. done, everyone. And for those of you who are watching at home or who mm -hmm. are currently online mm -hmm. and you'd like to get some enhancement exercises or materials for this lesson, mm -hmm. where can you get it from? Yeah, so if you would like to uh, get more sources for this, mm -hmm. you can actually visit the Delima portal. All yeah, right. we have that. Thank you once again, Miss Sim, for our lesson right. for today. And thank you to Miss Cathy as our sign language interpreter, as well as our pupils who are online right now. Thank you so much for joining us. And for those of you watching at home, hopefully this has been beneficial to all of you, take care, stay safe, and we'll see you in our next class. Bye! Bye!